Indie Mogul. This week on Indie News, our own Russell Hasenauer interviews Kevin Spacey, the beautiful choreography behind this Steadicam shot, an epically cinematic music video from Woodkid, a simplified DIY light design, changing lenses with one hand, and I take you on a tour of my video gear closet. Hey Indie Mogulers, Griffin here. On Saturday, Russell Hasenauer attended the New York City premiere of The Ventriloquist, a short film starring Kevin Spacey. The young writer-director Benjamin Levitt won the opportunity to work with Spacey through the Jameson First Shot competition. Hey Griffin, on this week's Friday 101, I'll be doing a full episode discussing the Jameson First Shot film competition and featuring the interview that I did with Kevin Spacey, producer Dana Brunetti, and winner Benjamin Levitt. Just waiting on the footage of the three of them to come back to start putting that together. But in the meantime, here's a good shot of Kevin and I in the same room. There he is. And if you want Kevin Spacey in your short film, you can learn more about the Jameson First Shot screenwriting competition at jamesonfirstshot.com. During the production of Martin Scorsese's film Hugo, Steadicam operator Larry McConkley mounted a GoPro camera to his rig. Steadicam operation looks easy, but this behind-the-scenes look reminds us how much strength, finesse, and choreography a 90-second Steadicam shot requires. Check out how they actually removed a wall for part of the shot, and how busy the boom mic operator is. The French music video director Johan Lemoyne has worked with Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Lana Del Rey, but now he's produced a music video for his own song, Run Boy Run. And it is an incredibly epic, visually exciting work of art. You can watch the full video in today's playlist. When I built my DIY video light in March, some commenters wondered if it could be done without all the complicated wiring. One indie moguler found that a couple power strips and plug to socket converters does the job nicely. It's a quick, simple way to build your own video light. I shot a wedding over the weekend, and it's always annoying to switch lenses because you have to put everything down just to get the rear cap off and move it from one lens to the next. Fortunately, there's a Kickstarter project for this. The backer capper is a magnetic device that helps you swap lenses with one hand. Not everyone will appreciate this, but if you're a run and gun shooter, you may want to help this design reach its $20,000 goal. With today's episode, we're entering the fourth month of indie news, and I can't believe it's been that long already. I've learned so much from researching and producing this show, and I hope you've gained something from watching. Some of the most common questions I get from commenters are about the equipment I use, which makes sense. I'm always curious about what gear other filmmakers are using. And that's why I've done episodes about my lighting, my lenses, my microphones. But today I want to fill in the gaps. I want to show you everything I use. So let's take a tour of my gear closet. And make sure your annotations are turned on because I'll include links to previous episodes if you need more info. <laughs> Here are the lenses I featured on an episode in April, but since then I added an old Minolta 55mm to go with a cheap bellows system I bought. By moving the lens farther from the sensor, a bellows device lets you get super close-up macro images. The device doesn't mount onto my Panasonic GH2, so I built this custom wooden block with two tripod mounts to lock it to my camera. And two weeks ago, I learned that this lens also works well with a tilt adapter. Here are my microphones and Zoom H4n audio recorder, which I explained about a month ago. And I recently made a custom adapter to plug my XLR microphone directly into the sub-mini or 3 seconds inch jack on my camera. This is nice to have in a pinch if I'm using my audio recorder somewhere else and need decent audio on my camera. If you know how to solder, this adapter is easy to make and very similar to the iPhone adapter I made in a recent episode. And you remember my DIY teleprompter right here. Next to that are my secondary cameras, the GoPro Hero 2, which I got two weeks ago, and this Panasonic TM700. It's not as versatile as my DSLR, but camcorders are familiar and user-friendly, so it's easy for someone else to operate. But it also has lots of manual controls, internal disk space, and unlike my DSLR, it can shoot full 1080 at 60 frames per second. Mr. Jimbo Jackson recently asked about my first camera. I got this Sony Handycam when I was in high school. It shoots in standard definition, and nowadays, I only use it to play back old digital 8 tapes. 
but I shot a lot of videos with this camera and learned a lot, so I still love it. Up here are my lights, which you can learn all about in my DIY lighting episode. I also have a collapsible reflector disc, which helps bounce light, especially sunlight, into your scene. And I use this to set white balance, although a blank piece of paper also works pretty well. Down here are all my camera stabilizers, which I haven't talked about yet. ETO Big recently asked about my tripods. I got this Manfrotto tripod in Fluid Head when I was in high school. It uses a small quick release plate, and it still works well as a secondary tripod. I like the Manfrotto brand, so I upgraded to this model, which can handle more weight and has several design improvements. Leg tightening is simpler, and leg angle can be adjusted for low shots. The fluid head is stronger and smoother, and has a safer locking quick release plate. With tripods, you can buy heads and legs separately, so mix and match to get the right setup for your needs. I also have this Gorilla Pod, which is handy for weird setups, and works with these Cineskates for dollying shots. For handheld stability, I use a shoulder rig by Indie System called the Ultra Compact. It has gunstock style handles and a handle up top, plus plenty of room to attach extra gear. For Steadicam type shots, I use a Glidecam HD 2000. My camera is really light, so I've added ceramic tiles to the top to help balance the device. It's pricey, but it works well, and unlike DIY Steadicams, it's really quick and easy to adjust, which is important when I shoot weddings. I bought a couple extra quick release systems, so I can use one plate on my camera and quickly switch between devices. Unfortunately, my tripod uses a similar but slightly smaller plate. But if I wanted to, I suppose I could mount one quick release plate on top of the other to make things compatible. Because I shoot a lot of video of myself by myself, I like to mount a monitor on my tripod. For this, I couldn't find a decent DIY solution, so I bought a little clamp with an adjustable quarter inch screw. It's also nice for mounting my audio recorder on my tripod. Finally, when you have all this video gear, you need a decent way to carry it around. I have a standard camera bag, but for run and gun projects, I prefer this camera backpack, which has easy access to my DSLR and plenty of room for my primary equipment. Scary Hands recently asked about what kind of gear is most important besides camera and lenses, and I think most of us need a good tripod and microphone. Beyond that, it'll really depend on what kind of work you do. You'll notice that I don't have a follow focus or a jib or slider, but I don't have much use for those things. And likewise, you don't need all of my gear to produce your best work. Consider the law of diminishing returns. It means that the first thousand dollars that you spend on video gear does way more to improve your production capabilities than the second thousand you spend. And the third thousand dollars you spend does even less to improve your capabilities. Likewise, you could look at it, a camera that costs twice as much as your camera isn't twice as good, it's just a little bit better. But you'll find that after you make some money on video projects, you'll probably want to invest a smart amount of money on new gear to improve your capabilities to that next level. For most of my purchased gear, I try to keep a complete list at griffinhammond.com gear. So check that out if you need more info about any of the gear that I talked about today. Lots of videos on today's playlist. I have the short film starring Kevin Spacey, the incredible Steadicam shot from Hugo, the very cinematic music video for Run Boy Run, the modified DIY video light, and the backer capper. This will be an exciting week on Indie Mogul. Starting tomorrow, Tuesdays and Thursdays are Mogular Made, meaning we're featuring your videos on the channel. A shout out to Smack Wits and Volatile Productions, who correctly guessed our next awesome director. His name is Chris Crutchfield, and you'll meet him this Wednesday on the Awesome Directors Project. And on Friday 101, Russell's interview with actor-producer Kevin Spacey. I'll see you later.